How do you actually get a cloud engineer job? What are the secret tricks, tips, and strategies that you need to implement? Let's be honest, right now, the tech market isn't looking great. Thousands of people are being laid off, but I'm here to tell you that there's still a lot of opportunities out there. In fact, here are the listings for junior cloud engineer jobs in the US for the past week. As you can see, there are new cloud engineer jobs being added every single day. So how do you tap into these opportunities and get yourself in front of hiring managers? Now, as someone who has navigated this landscape successfully, I'm going to share with you the exact steps that you need to take. But first, why should you listen to me? Well, I've got the credentials and experience to back it up. I run my own cloud security business where I help startups worldwide build secure and robust cloud platforms. I've got professional level AWS certifications, proving my depth of knowledge in this field. And perhaps most importantly, I've guided hundreds of students to start their own cloud journeys through my own cloud education company. In fact, what I'm about to share with you is the same tried and true process that I teach my students inside my Cloud Engineer Academy. And guess what? It works. One of our recent graduates landed a jaw-dropping $250,000 per year job using these very same strategies. So whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned IT professional looking to transition into the cloud, listen up. I'm about to reveal the insider secrets that can help you stand out, get noticed, and ultimately land the cloud engineer job of your dreams. But be warned, this isn't your typical generic job advice. These are the real no BS tactics that have been proven to work time and time again in the competitive world of cloud engineering, but also tech. Before we get started, you should check out my weekly cloud newsletter where I share free resources, tutorials, boot camps, and so much more helping you make your cloud move. So before you apply for a cloud engineer job, you have to make sure that you've developed the right skill set. And I'm not talking about just memorizing a bunch of AWS services. I'm talking about building a solid foundation. When I started my cloud journey, I made the same mistake that most people do. I tried to learn everything at once. I was jumping from one new tool to another, one new technology to the next. It was a mess. But then I realized something. I needed to focus on the fundamentals, the core building blocks of the cloud. And that's when things started to click. You see, most people in interviews, they can't even answer the most basic questions. Why? Because they've skipped the foundations. They went straight to learning AWS without understanding what the cloud is really about. That's like trying to drive a car without knowing the rules of the road. It's not going to end very well. Now, by the way, I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of May. So hit that subscribe button because I'm so close to getting that first YouTube plaque. So what are these crucial foundations? I'm talking about virtualization, networking, operating systems, databases, and security. These are your bread and butter your ticket to the cloud engineering big leagues. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the details of each one. I've covered these in my other videos. But let me tell you, if you can explain these concepts to someone in simple terms, if you can show why they matter in the cloud, you are already ahead of the game. Once you've got these foundations locked down, then you can start thinking about learning a cloud platform like AWS. But here is where most people make their second mistake. They try to learn every single AWS service, all 200 of them. That is crazy. You don't need to know all of them. In fact, you'll probably never use even half of them. Instead, focus on the services that matter the most, the ones that show up in every cloud project, well, almost every project. I'm talking about VPCs, IAM, EC2, S3, DynamoDB, RDS, and Lambda. Master these and you'll be well on your way to being part of the 1% cloud engineers. Now let's talk about certifications. And everyone thinks that they are the golden ticket, the key to the instant cloud engineering success. But let me tell you something, certifications are overrated. Don't get me wrong, they have their own place, they give you credibility, they can make you stand out to hiring managers, 
but they are not everything. If you're just starting out, here is what I recommend with AWS certifications. Get the AWS Cloud Practitioner certification first. It's the foundational level. It shows you understand the basics of AWS. Then go for the AWS Solution Architect Socia. And guess what? If you get the Cloud Practitioner first, you get a 50% discount on the Solution Architect exam. It's a no brainer. Follow the same certification roadmap if you're learning Azure or GCP, focus on the foundation and then the associate level. They all have similar type of certification paths, but don't fall into the certification trap. You don't need to collect them all like Pokemon cards. Two is plenty to start with. And once you're in your role, then you can start thinking about the professional level certifications. But here is the thing, certifications alone won't get you the job. You need practical experience. You need to show that you can actually use AWS, that you can build something with it. And that's where projects come into the picture. Building your own projects is the way to solidify your understanding and your learning. It's how you turn the theory into practice. It's how you show hiring managers that you're not just a paper certified cloud engineer, but a real world problem solver. And that brings me to my secret tip, the one that will get you the interview every single time. But you have to stay tuned for that one because I'm saving the best for last. For now, focus on the foundations, focus on the core AWS services, get a couple of certifications under your belt and start building. And let's be real, certifications are great and all, but they don't mean jack if you can't actually do the job. And what is a cloud engineer's job? It's building things, it's solving problems, it's getting your hands dirty in the cloud. And that's where practical experience comes in. That's where it separates the paper tigers from the real deal. And let me tell you something, there's no better way to get that experience than building your own projects. But where do you start? What kind of projects should you build? I'll tell you what I tell all of my students. Start simple. Start with something that you can wrap your head around and then build from there. And here is a few perfect examples. A static website hosted on AWS. It sounds basic, right? But it's a goldmine of learning opportunities. You'll use Terraform to provision an S3 bucket and configure it for static web hosting. You create a simple website using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and then you'll upload it to an S3 bucket. And here is where things get interesting. You'll integrate CICD using GitHub Actions, but what does that mean? It means that every time that you make a change to your website and push it to your repository in GitHub, GitHub Actions will automatically deploy those changes to your S3 bucket. And boom, just like that, you've got an automated deployment, just like the professionals do. But why do you stop there? You can take things to the next level. You can build a serverless API backend. Again, you can use Terraform, create an API gateway and an AWS Lambda function. Write your Lambda function using Python or Node.js to handle API requests and spit out any dynamic data. Configure the API gateway to trigger your Lambda function based on specific HTTP methods and paths. And guess what? You use GitHub Actions again to automate your deployment of your Lambda function and API gateway. And every time you push a change, GitHub Actions will make sure it goes live. No manual intervention needed. This is the beauty of cloud engineering. And I know it's got you thinking. These projects sound too simple, too basic, but that is the point. You're not trying to build the next Facebook here. You're trying to learn. You're trying to build a foundation. And these projects teach you the fundamentals. They get you hands-on with these tools and services that you'll use every day as a cloud engineer. AWS, Terraform, and CICD with GitHub Actions. These aren't just buzzwords. They are your bread and butter. And here's the thing, by building projects, you're not just learning how to use these tools, you're learning how to use them the right way. You're following best practices. You're doing things the way that they're done in the real world. And don't be that person who can only set up cloud projects using the AWS console. That's not how it works in the industry. In the industry, we automate. We use infrastructure as code. We use CICD. We make things repeatable and scalable. And one more thing, document your work. Keep a record of what you've built and how you've built it. Because trust me, you'll thank yourself later on. Documentation is a crucial part of any cloud engineer role or any tech role. 
any cloud role is how you keep track of your work. It's how you share knowledge within your team. So start building, start with these simple projects and then keep going, keep learning, keep pushing yourself. The more you build, the more you learn and the more you learn, the more you earn and become valuable as a cloud engineer. Practical experience is your secret weapon. It's what will make you stand out in a sea of certifications. It's what will prove to employers that you're not just a learner, but a doer. And trust me, that's what they want. They want someone that can get hands-on and build things and take ownership. So are you ready to take your cloud career to the next level? Do you wanna build real world cloud skills that makes you irresistible to employers? Do you wanna learn from someone who has been in the trenches, who's built his own successful cloud business, who's helped hundreds of students learn the cloud? Well, then you need to check out my Cloud Engineer Academy. This isn't just another online course. This is a comprehensive, structured, educational program designed to take you from zero to cloud hero. Whether you are a complete beginner or you've been dabbling in the cloud for a while, the Cloud Engineer Academy will give you the skills, the confidants, and the portfolio to succeed. I don't even wanna to talk too much about it because it's just the best place to learn the cloud. Inside the Cloud Engineer Academy, you won't just get access to the course content. You have access to the live workshops, private Discord community of cloud enthusiasts, interview preparation, my own personal CV template to help me secure multiple six-figure jobs, and even one-on-one -on -one interview preparation with me and weekly coaching calls. But don't just take my word for it check out the reviews from our current students on our website. Like the one from Jack, who recently landed a $250,000 total compensation package through the academy. That's the kind of results that you'll expect when you invest in your cloud education. So if you're serious about your cloud career, if you're ready to put the work in and build skills that will last you a lifetime, then head over to www.cloudengineeracademy.io. Enroll today and start your journey to becoming a cloud expert. The cloud is the future, and with the Cloud Engineer Academy, that future is yours for the taking. So you've got the right skill set, certifications, and you're building projects. It's now to optimize your CV or resume if you're in the US. And the first thing you want to do is make sure you've got your CV and resume in a Word document format. So many beginners make the mistake of creating their CV on PDF or as an image. This is a rookie error and you need to make sure your CV is a Word document because it won't have any formatting errors when it's being downloaded and viewed by recruiters. Now your resume must highlight your technical skills, your certifications and your practical experience. You should also forget writing anything that says that I did this, that I did that. It needs to be worded more correctly, such as delivered cloud project, designed and implemented websites on AWS, automated serverless projects with Terraform and CRCD. You see how different this is than using words such as I did this, I did that. This makes a huge difference for the reader when they're reviewing your resume. Now, I recommend you add a summary of your experience mixed with your technical skills at the top of your resume and then your practical work experience and then your certifications. Then at the bottom, you can add any personal projects that you've worked on, as well as your hobbies and general other interests. Because no one wants someone that's just obsessed with work. You need to have some other skills and interests. Now, if you don't have any work experience, then put your projects at the top instead of your practical work experience. Okay, so your CV is ready and you've started looking for a job. Now, the best way to get a job is through referrals. In order to get a referral, you need a network. And in order to get a network is to start sharing and posting your cloud journey online. You can also join online communities and engage with people within the industry. And of course, LinkedIn is great for this. And I recommend you use LinkedIn to showcase what you're learning and your talents. So now you have a job that you like the look of, but there are loads of other people that have applied. So how do you stand out? Simply clicking apply is no longer good enough because it's very competitive out there. Don't get me wrong. You need to do more. You have to go out of your way to get in front of the recruiter and the hiring manager. 
In fact, this is exactly what I would do to get a guaranteed interview. Firstly, I would apply for the role and contact the recruiter that you have applied for the role and attach your CV. Two days after, if you haven't heard anything, I would record a personal video that you've applied for the role and that you think you'd be a great fit for this job and send this both to the recruiter and hiring manager. This style has never failed me. Every time that I've done this, I've got an interview at the very minimum. You see, when CVs are being reviewed online, they can't put a face to a CV. So in order to overcome this, you should be more personal. You should do a little bit extra and record a quick video. And I guarantee you this will automatically put your face and name in their minds when they're reviewing CVs and you will for sure get an interview. This has worked for me every single time. And once you are in the interview, it's genuinely a 50-50% chance that you can get the job. And all you need to do then is get them to like you. So overall, it's very, very simple. You need to build the right skill set, apply the skills to practical projects, make sure your resume is well written, and finally go over and beyond to get an interview. Now, I didn't say it was going to be easy, but if it was, everyone will be making over six figures a year. Anyway, like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, because I want to hit 100,000 subscribers, and I'll see you on the next one.